Good evening. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. On April 4, 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. was standing outside room 306, known as the King Abernathy Suite, at the Lorraine Motel. At 6.01 p.m., he was shot and killed. Following the Great Depression and World War II, the United States was trying to get back on its feet. A new solution was being talked amongst leaders, urban renewal. Urban renewal is the redevelopment of areas within a large city, typically involving the clearance of slums. From 1934 to 1941, under the autocratic rule of Mayor Edward Crump and Director of the Memphis Housing Authority, Joseph Fowler, 3,337 new public housing units in segregated complexes had been built after the clearance of hundreds of dilapidated dwellings. Lauderdale Courts, built in 1938, was one of the country's first federal public housing projects. Elvis Presley was a resident of these white-only apartments from 1949 to 1953. In 1939, the Memphis Housing Authority replaced the areas in between the streets Vance Avenue, Lauderdale Street, Mississippi Boulevard, and 4th Street with federally funded public housing projects. These projects included Lauderdale Courts, Dixie Homes, Foot Homes, and Cleborne Homes. These projects would be temporary residences to those that were affected by the Great Depression. Foot Homes off of Vance Avenue was the second largest and most affordable public housing complex for the low-income African-American population. It was completed April 21, 1941, each unit equipped with large social spaces for recreation and modern appliances. Beginning in 1953, highways were beginning to sprout around Memphis, leading to the suburban paradises outside the city. The central surrounding loop, I-240, was completed in 1963. This allowed Memphians to abandon the downtown district in disagreement of the passage of civil rights laws and the desegregation of public housing. The addition of highways led to empty sidewalks in the downtown district, which fed fears about decrease in public safety as well as the vacant, blighted blocks. In an attempt to eradicate the issue, the city of Memphis lost the district surrounding Beale Street by raising whole blocks at one time. No large-scale urban renewal projects were further presented until after Edmund Orgill became mayor in 1955. Orgill proposed many projects during his term, including Railroad Avenue, Jackson Avenue, Riverview, the Medical Center, and the Civic Center. One of Mayor Orgill's largest plans was to use urban renewal funds to transform Beale Street into a variation of Bourbon Street in New Orleans to promote tourism. Those plans were put on hold in 1966 by the National Park Service, who designated two blocks of Beale Street a National Historic Landmark. Beale Street was at one time recognized as the main street of Negro America, the center of urban African American culture. Although Riverview was never produced, Orgill's Railroad Avenue project was launched, raising 292 substandard structures on 42 acres in order to place commercial industrial development. It was placed right below the Foot Homes and Cleborne Homes projects. The new mayor's refusal to remove dilapidated trucks from service cost the life of two Memphis garbage collectors, A. Cole Cole and Robert Walker. On February 1, 1968, the garbage truck malfunctioned and crushed the two men. Ten days later, after a long history of frustration with the worsening conditions, 1,300 African-American sanitation workers from the Memphis Department of Public Works went on strike. On the morning of March 28th, King led thousands of people in a march along Beale Street, accompanied alongside with policemen, nervously waiting for a moment of turmoil. The march turned violent when young African-Americans began throwing bricks at policemen and breaking storefront windows. Tear gas was released along with the use of their whistling clubs and guns. The following day, March 29th, the sanitation workers continued their pursuit and walked along the sides of 4,000 National Guardsmen that were called into the city by the governor of Tennessee. They marched with placards that read, I am a man. On April 3rd, 1968, Dr. King returned to Memphis to deliver his famous mountaintop speech that addressed the sanitation workers' strike. 
The question is, if I do not stop to help the sanitation workers, what will happen to them? That's the question. You know what happened the other day, and the press dealt only with the window breaking. I read the article. They very seldom got around to mentioning the fact that 1,300 sanitation workers are on strike and that Memphis is not being fair to them and that Mayor Loeb is in dire need of a doctor. They didn't get around. The death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. not only took a toll on the African-American community, but also on the city of Memphis. The assassination opened the eyes of city leaders. The price of white recalcitrance to neighborhood change became clear. For the first time in over a decade, housing issues that had been left to fester were finally being confronted by the authorities of Memphis. The assassination did not kill downtown Memphis, but instead expedited trends that were underway in attempt to revitalize the city. An example of one of these forgotten trends is Mayor Orgill's plan to redevelop Beale Street. 1,500 residents were removed from all but 65 of 625 buildings from a 113-acre area at the cost of 14 million federal dollars. Memphis architectural historians Johnson and Russell claimed that Beale Street later became the devastated victim of an urban renewal program about which one cannot say enough bad things. It was one of the saddest examples of what urban renewal did to American cities. Dr. King's legacy is still seen today in so many aspects, but his vision can be specifically seen through one woman, Jacqueline Smith. Jacqueline was the last tenant of the Lorraine Motel before it was converted into the Civil Rights Museum. Mrs. Smith envisions what Dr. King believed, there is an end to poverty. She believes that the museum should be a halfway house for the poor and the money used on the museum should instead be used to provide food and shelter. Jacqueline Smith has been standing up for what she and Dr. King believe in for over 25 years. Jacqueline sits across from the Lorraine Motel, day and night, awaiting justice. Aside from the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King had equal impact on urban renewal in Memphis. Because of the assassination, urban renewal was expedited and the displacement of the African American community significantly worsened. Martin Luther King is still impacting Memphis today in current urban renewal affairs and the betterment of public housing as well as protests and movements supporting his practices and teachings.